Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Welcome to the infotainment walkthrough on the 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how the gauge cluster works, how this big, giant center screen works, and maybe even a little bit on the passenger screen as well. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. The funky looking EQS. Got it here in the 580 trim, currently the top dog. EQS, but who knows if they're going to come out with any more luxurious or more powerful models. This car has a lot going on for it. It's it's pretty efficient. It's got a huge battery, but also a very tech heavy and strange interior. So if you do want to see more, check the links in the description. We've got a few other videos covering different elements of the car. First things first, digging into this big, beautiful gauge cluster. Let's get the wheel all the way up, let you see it best here. Controlled by the left side of the wheel, some haptic controls. You can slide your finger around to get different screens, such as eco displays there, ranges, uh, how efficient you're being, your media that you can swipe through, a little bit of navigation going on there. But if none of that is enough for you, you press this home button, and then you're greeted with some different gauge displays. You can bring up this optional sporty one. It shows things a little bit differently. Then you have to kind of swipe through Oh, can you even swipe through to get to other screens? No, it looks like that's all it's given you. That's for some sporty type driving, and then you hit back, and it actually goes to the classic screen. Interesting enough. You also have a, an understated screen, so that's pretty much just showing you your speed and the time right there. A little bit of other information like range. Go back. You go up here. Adjustments for the augmented reality. So there's actually a head-up display there, and as you're driving with the adaptive cruise control, for example, it will light up and show where it's following the car and show you different navigation directions up there. So you can change your head-up display for all those. You can make it minimalized, kind of full tilt like we have it here, and a few different settings for that. Come down. Now, I will say, when your fingers get sweaty, this thing doesn't love to respond to everything. You can bring up a navigation gauge cluster, so it shows you the map, similar to what you have here right up in there. Some people like that if you're doing a lot of navigationing. And what else? Some driver assistance screen and a service screen. Okay, now for this big boy. Whole lot going on here, so let's dig right in. This is kind of your home screen, if you will. It sort of defaults to navigation, and I think that's what most people are going to want it showing to start off with. So you've got a little bit of audio down here. You can control that. Up here, some cards for certain screens. You can go quickly to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto from up there. Here's your climate. You bring up the climate menu. Vehicle's off right now. I guess I could turn it on. Some fun sounds going on. Here's where you can adjust where you want the air going for both the first and second row of seats. Some changes for air quality. You've got an air ionizer, but unfortunately, no Mercedes perfume, as I like to call it. So if you're used to S-Class and getting that fragrance that you can put in there, you're not getting that. And then pre-entry climate control, you can set it to be already warmed up for you before you even set off. And you can quick change your climate controls right here, either for auto, temperature, dual zone. Pretty responsive. And if you want to turn it all off, go back in there. Down it goes. Selecting home brings you this home screen of apps, if you will, starting in the top left, Mercedes EQ. This is going to give you information about your charge and battery. You've got a socket flap that you can open up on the side, pause your charging if it's going, your battery level and percentage, I like to see that, and you can set your maximum charge rate, uh, a charge amount rather, so if you want to keep that not topped off at maybe 90% to extend the life of your battery for a long ownership period, you could do that. We're here in range. Some functionality to extend your range. For example, eco driving functions I used earlier today. That's going to adjust your regeneration so that you recuperate more energy in a more efficient way. And it can also restrict some climate control things if you really need to squeeze out as much range as possible. And this is a consumption screen here. It's going to show you how efficient you've been as you drive for a mixture of 7.5 minutes all the way up to three hours. Going back, we have some applications. Weather, Mercedes Me, that's going to allow you to do some Mercedes concierge type things. You can see they're trying to get a little Tesla here. You've got a web browser, some games built in, such as Tetris and Sudoku. 
what else? Um, a gallery, so you could actually uh, maybe put some photos on here and scroll through those. Maybe old people would like that. Let's uh, let's skip settings for now. Let's go into comfort. This is how you're going to activate your massaging seats for both your driver and passenger. Many different massage options. Mercedes works, I should say Mercedes massaging works really well. I've always been a fan of how they do massages and they're pretty quiet too. You can also adjust your lumbar in all of your seats. Get it fine tuned exactly how you like it. Adjust your side bolsters, one through 10. Your seat heating, it's got a neck warmer. That's pretty darn cool. Huh, additional neck warmer and balance your seat heating if you want a little more on your butt or a little bit more on your back. Maybe taking a lesson from GM's book out of there. Automatic seat positioning, if you want to, uh, if you want the seat to set itself for, uh, if you kind of tell it like, okay, I'm this tall, how should my seat be set and kind of recommend it for you there. And some seat kinetics, which are just gonna move everything around. If you're on a long drive, you might wanna use that to kind of stretch yourself out. Then you've got adjustment for ambient lighting. Now Mercedes does some of the best ambient lighting on the market. We've got our brightness blasted now. You can see even here with some some lighting still going outside. I'm seeing all of it around the cabin. Multi-zone, or rather multi-colors as well. So different parts of the car you can see over on that side, you've got some coralish, some pinks, some purples. Really quite cool. I love how Mercedes does ambient lighting. I think they, oh, that's a thing. I accidentally said the M word and that is making it so the car is listening for things in case I were to give it a, a command to do something navigation wise or something like that. So be careful if you're driving this brand of car to not say the, war, the name of it if that is enabled. How may I help you? Yeah, there we go. Cancel. Please cancel. Sorry. Are you, are you gone? Okay, good. So she apologized for being intrusive. That's kind, at least. And you can also change your color to one of 64 different options. I really like that. This thing, oh yeah, it really sets it off. Very, very good on Mercedes right there. I love their ambient lighting. Back, back, back. Let's go phone. Nothing too surprising there. You can sync up your phone, make calls. Radio. Make sure this is tuned all the way down. I should say we've got a separate sound system demo if you want to actually hear how the Burmester works in practice. But if you're on Sirius XM, it's kind of cool how you can scroll through the channels like this or just put one right in if that works better for you. Got categories, I like that. You can go straight to something like sports or jazz or something. You can probably make your own mixes as well. Switch on over to FM and you got a similar deal. You can scroll through stations. And of course, since we're driving this in Ann Arbor, you'd be listening to 91.7 Michigan radio because you drive a Mercedes. You can scroll through your stations as well. It even shows you the little uh, station album art. I quite like that. So you might, if you just listen to the Detroit Lions lose on Sunday, then on Monday you might want to listen to 97.1, the ticket, to hear him get angry about that. Tune in radio as well. So you've got some radio streaming. I like seeing that. In the media screen, this is where you're going to see your Bluetooth, your Android Auto, your online music, which includes Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, and Tidal. I'm sure they could add other streaming services in there if they wanted to, but that's just about all you're going to need. And USB, which did not work for me earlier. Information. This is going to show you flow, so where power is going to each of the wheels, and some info on your vehicle. It's going to show you how much you're pressing the accelerator pedal. You can see there, maxing out, or the brake, and how tilted your vehicle is. Can't see people using that functionality too much in these cars, but hey, if you've already got it programmed, might as well use it. For settings, this is where you're gonna get all into the nitty gritty of your car. You can adjust following distances for the adaptive cruise control, which I don't understand why you can't just do that from here. Oh, actually you can. So I guess you can, uh, oh, this is for adopting the speed limit and changing how aggressively it, uh, it brakes and accelerates. I like being able to customize that. Different driving settings, settings for your cameras. You can open the camera cover back there to clean it if you needed to all sorts of various settings that you could really take a long time. I highly recommend if you have a car like this to just spend time learning your car, get in it, sit in the driveway, play around, it can make a huge difference in your ownership experience. This is an important one to me in the vehicle tab, the creep function. If you want the EQS to act like it has full proper one pedal driving, then you want to use the creep function off. You don't want that on because then the car with strong recuperation will come to a stop for you. If you have creep on, gonna keep moving 
blow about 10 miles per hour. Comfort mode, you can do some various things in there, nothing too important. You've got adjustments for lighting, both inside and out. You can adjust your ambient light in here again as well, but it's gonna have a few different settings for how long the lights stay on. Literally, my GoPro just turned off for no reason. It, it didn't even give me an error message. It had nine minutes of, did it overheat? It must have overheated. That is one toasty battery. We're gonna swap that. System, this is where you're going to disable that Hey Mercedes function. So now I can actually say the name of the car. Proactivity. In selected situations, voice assistant becomes active even without your speech. Okay change your profile if you've left your phone in the car let's turn that for ranges low as well i think that's smart a few different suggestions there if it does have a driver camera so um it, while you're driving the car if you want the active lane keeping to stay on without you touching the steering wheel use a semi-autonomous mode then you want that camera to be on that's actually watching you some people aren't going to be comfortable with that Many more adjustments, your audio controls. Here's how you're going to do your time and date. You can actually adjust the time manually there or just kind of go to a GPS time. Software update and reset if you need to do any of that in there. That's where you're going to find it. And your owner's manual is hiding over there on the info screen. All right, how about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? I've got my Android phone plugged in first, so let's bring up Android Auto. This is one of the few cars that Android Auto actually looks better than Apple CarPlay. Right here on your home screen, if you will, the app screen, you're seeing all of your applications. Space is used very well, and you're getting the widescreen version of Android Auto, so it's showing you Google Maps on the right side. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay, okay, I guess it just did that. So if I were to navigate, for example, over here to this Boba Tea House Ann Arbor, and then I would east toward airport. Yes, Industrial yes, drive. yes, we get it. And then I were to go back home, you see my navigation stays up on the right side there. Alternatively, I brought up YouTube Music and started playing some tunes. And then go back to the map. Then you've got your music on the right side and your mapping on the left. I think that's a really good functionality. I, I like Apple Car or rather Android Auto for that reason. I think Apple CarPlay could stand to get some sort of cooler split screen setup like that. There's that, there's your settings screen. Everything's loading pretty well. Looks like the responsiveness is good and the refresh rate is nice. So let's switch over to Apple CarPlay. Both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are compatible wirelessly with the EQS. So if you do want to switch, you're gonna have to turn off that device. And this one I have set to only work with a wire. And Apple CarPlay comes right up. This is kind of strange to me. It looks beautiful, but it's interesting that they didn't utilize the space a little bit more efficiently here. So you can see I've got my main screen and then these two app screens. It, it, I feel like they maybe could have fit an extra row of applications, either three, three tall there or maybe an extra one width wise. But admittedly, it does look nice and it's gonna keep you from accidentally touching the wrong app. Let's go to our setting screen here. Let's see, it's, there's room for everything, that's for sure. Bring up Google Maps. Again, looking good, taking up a lot of space. Your climate's still down here. And let's take a look at YouTube Music. But again, I like how with these larger screens, Android Auto takes advantage of a little bit more of that display, but Apple CarPlay still looks great. Now, typically that would be the end of the review, but this car has a third screen over on the passenger side. So let's go take a quick look at that. Before we wrap things up here, I'm gonna move all my gear out of the way. Now the passenger screen is disabled when there's nobody sitting in the seat. When, if you see, if I elevate myself off, then you can't do anything with it. But once I let my butt down, it senses weight in the seat, I get an on button, press that. And it's essentially a mini version of that screen. You can use a profile if you want. Get booted there, you can see the EQ screen showing us our charging information. Got navigation right there. You can do radio and media things. Interestingly, you can't do the Apple CarPlay on Android Auto. I guess that kind of makes sense. It's going into that main system, but if you had USB on or you wanted to do something with the radio, you turn it on right there. Change your volume. 
How would you do that? Probably right. Oh. Okay, so you can actually pair up some Bluetooth headphones to the screen if you wanted, have your own separate thing going, or just put it through the car. I think that's pretty nifty. Here you can change your climate control in case this is too difficult to reach over here. Maybe the driver is doing something with this whole screen and you want to be able to adjust it right here all on your own. That was pretty cool. What can you do comfort-wise? I assume you can do, yep, your seat massage, adjust your seat. You can even adjust the ambient lighting. Very good. That's pretty nifty. We're starting to see more and more passenger screens, but this seems to be a really good execution of it. And I think Mercedes EQS owners are going to appreciate that. So thank you all so much for watching. That was the EQS's three screen infotainment setup. It's a little overwhelming, but other than a few small annoyances like the volume controls, which you can hear me rant about in the sound system test, I think this car is pretty darn cool and the tech is definitely pushing toward the future. Thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the EQS, check the links in the description and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor and as always, drive on. Thank mm -hmm. you.